you're tuning into RG Magazine, and uh, I am Nikki Phillip, and we're here with Unique. And Unique, give us a little bit of information about yourself. Tell our viewers about who you are. Um, well, I'm a digital content creator as well as an entertainment correspondent for the YVF. Um, I produce for radio at MS, which is VLS 97, and I have a um, podcast is called Dear Black Girl, which is basically about black women's action. Hey, this is your girl, Nikki Phillip, and you're tuning into RG Magazine. We are here with Unique. Hi. <laughs> um, Unique, yeah. let our uh, viewers know a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm a digital content creator as well as an entertainment correspondent for the YBF. Um, I produce shows for WBLS on Hot and I have a podcast that's called Dear Black Girl, where I just share stories of black women in media using music. So I'll... The play here today is called Get Out of Your Own Way. Do you have any advice for people that wanted to uh, get out, their own, get out way. their own way? <laughs> um, I would say one of the ways to get out of your own way is to not overthink um, and to also just be leave in your abilities because when you second guess yourself and overthink, you're just that's just the main way of getting in your way. You need what? Uh, how do people get in contact with you? Um, you can reach me on my Instagram page. Uh, my email is there. My Instagram is Uni Smiles. U uh, N E E Smiles. Are there any new projects you're working on currently? Um, not right now. No. <laughs> so you guys, you heard it here first. RG Magazine. And we're here with Unique. You heard the Instagram. Hit her up. She's the business. She's the plug. You heard it here first. <laughs> and we'll be back. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> hey, we are back with Zavita D, honey. Please give our audience a oh, little okay. bit of information. Zavita D, honey. You, I like how you said it. Yes. It's Zavita D, baby. <laughs> I love it. Give our audience a little bit about just something that they don't know. Tell us something that we don't know. Okay, so hello, audience. How are you? So I hope y'all living in y'all purpose. I, that's what I need y'all to be doing. So there's a lot of things. Like, as you know, I'm a host. I'm an entertainer. I'm an actress. I'm on um, MTV Wildin' Out as a pre-show host since season 9. We're up to season 14. Ain't God good. And um, on top of that, I did pre-show host for TRL, The View. I did, uh, what else? Oh, I did, um, sorry to say, um... I'm trying to think of the other one, making, oh. Everything. MTV Summer. Everything. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> Listen, I got so much on my head because I want to let y'all know what's on my mind. Not about me, but more about you. Because I want you to be living in your purpose. See, everybody, you go to your 9 to 5, that's amazing. But make sure that 9 to 5 is the dream job that you wanted, that you're doing what makes you happy. So the things that you don't know about me is what I do behind the scenes. I have six schools and two centers in which I'm on a board of, in which I make sure that the children, the little youth ones, the little four or five-year-olds, are doing what they need to do to get the education that they need so they can succeed like us. That's what I do. Also, do you have any advice for people that are in their own way? Yeah, let me tell y'all something. I got a lot of advice for that. So my advice is not coming from a book I read. My advice to you is coming from my life experience. I come from working from the city, job, working, got illegal. I got five degrees, honey. I'm being very real with y'all. After my five degrees, undergrad, grad, and all of that, got my master's, dual. I said, wait, <laughs> this is not what God called me for. This is not my purpose. This is not my gift. So I left my nine to five, four, one K and all. And I'm now living as an entrepreneur, as an entertainer, as a freelancer, as a CEO of Happy Endings Comedy Show. And I'm hosting on major sitcoms like MTV. Thank you so much. That's my family. And I do a lot of shows for them. And in addition to that, I'm on Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio with Quake House. I do a lot of radio on Hollywood Unlocked. So I'm blessed because I got out of my way. So take that leap. You ain't going to be broke. It's okay to struggle, but at least you're struggling happiness. It's a big difference. Misery is not the way you want to live your life. You want to live your life in happiness, and you want to live your life in your purpose. So my advice to you is stop making excuses. Stop saying, oh, I can't do it because I don't have this amount of money. I don't have this yet. I don't have that. You have it. It's already within you. Your purpose lives within you. Now live it, honeys. That's all you need to do. Just live it. Stop blocking your blessings. Can you tell our viewers where to find you? Yes, y'all can find me on Instagram where you get to see all my silly funny videos. And, um, you know, I do 
Boxum's positiveness at I A M Davida dot D. And for those that are at home, I'm going to spell it out for you. It's I as in ice, A as in apple, M as in Mark, D as in David, A as in apple, V as in Victor, I as in ice, D as in David, A as in apple, dot D. You can follow me on Instagram. And as you can see, I do voiceovers too. Because, you know, I ain't playing. I'm out here entertaining. I'm working hard, y'all. Yeah, I'm using all my gifts. So follow me on IG, baby. <laughs> you got to love it. Okay, you caught it here on IG Magazine, baby. Yes. Stay tuned for our next Y'all better stay tuned. This girl looking beautiful. Y'all better stay tuned, honey. Yes, baby. And we're back, and we're here with Chris. Chris, give us a little bit of information about what you'll be doing today. Um, I'll be singing my original song, Get Out of Your Own Way. Um, I made it back, I have to say, in late November. And so far, it's been really good. Um, it helps a lot of people. It's inspirational. It tells you, like, basically to get out of your own way and do whatever you can do or do whatever you do do to make yourself, you know, more available and happier. So, yeah. So what inspired you to, to make that song? Um, it was just a lot of the things that I had in my own, um, trying to, you know, get myself together and figure out what I'm going to do in life because adulting is very hard and scary at the moment. Um, so, yeah. So I'm just trying to find my way in life, and I've created it to do whatever I needed to do. And do you have any advice for people to get out of their own way? Um, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And I will say this a hundred times over, do not be afraid. Because if you are, it kind of stops you from doing what you need to do to become successful in your own right. So if you want to be successful, jump for it. Do whatever you can do to make it happen. And where do people find you? Um, I'm on Instagram. Chris Hobson, uh, no, underscore Chris, underscore 0816, and that's my uh, Instagram. You heard it here at RG Magazine. Tune in, and we'll have another guest for you. Hi, we are back with rgmagazine.com, and we're here with parentheses. First and foremost, could you let people know how to pronounce it? Ah, get it right now. It's parentheses E Gardner, so instead of the E, it's the Y. S-I-S instead of E-S-I-S. So it's for this is E-Garden. You heard it here. Don't pick it up. <laughs> Can you tell our viewers a little bit about what you do? Well, I directed the piece, Sharon. I was actually in Sharon. It's so funny. I was in one of her first plays. Um, and, and we hadn't really talked to each other in maybe about, I don't know, five years? But we followed each other because she was doing her thing and I'm one of those people that show up at everything. Hey, how you doing? Nice. You know, and she's one, of, she's one of those people herself as well. Mm -hmm. And so we just kept bumping into each other and showing and support. Mm -hmm. And out of the blue, she called me and she says, hey, she talked to Jesus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, she's, and she told me, she said, I want you to do my play because I used to live in Philly and I moved to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And so it was like East Coast, West Coast smash up. Nice. And so and I've read the script and I'm like, yes, mm -hmm. I'll do it. Amazing. I do it. And, and, you see, and once you see it, it's a beautiful, beautiful. We her, can't wait to see it. Her pen is dangerous. I'll say that. <laughs> okay. Do you have any advice for people that need to get out of their own way? Absolutely. I'm also one of the co-workers in her book, For Get Out of Your Own Way. Yes. And, um, and, and my story is a, a place called Stardom. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I kind of told the story of just picking up my bags, selling everything, and just jetting. There's no family over here for me. There's no, no bloodline over here for me. I just kind of said, okay, if I want something different, if you want something different, you have to be the one to change it because nobody else is going to change it for you. And nobody's going to believe in your dream more than you do. So if, if you have that passion and that purpose for that dream, just allow God to, to order your steps. And that's how I've been living. And I've been okay with it. Uh, what are you working on right now and next? Oh, so well, I have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Besides the book, Sharon wrote Sharon's because you know she has a publishing company. A publishing company. She will be publishing two of my books, um, as well as I will be directing her feature film of Get Out of Your Own Way, uh, uh, adaptation of Get Out of Your Own Way, and I look forward to it because, again, like I said, um, when God gave her gave her a pity, gave her purpose, um, and. With that being said, I have two stage plays coming up. I'm directing one, Miss Leighton Lady 3, the third chronicle of that one, and mine, which is called The Hunted Star, which will be coming up in August. Yeah. What, what was your inspiration behind the play? You, you know, um, with get out of your own way because I was going through something myself. Mm -hmm. So it was a lesson of revelation and reveal for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
And so and when she gave it to me and I read it, I'm like, ooh, it, uh, stuff just started revealing itself. And God was speaking to me through her words. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I took it and ran with it. I said, yes, I got to bring this play to life for you. Tell me what you want. Tell me your vision. And let's create it together. And that's pretty much what we've been doing. When you are doing the writing for the characters, what, mm-hmm. what do you look for in, in your uh, it, it's, it's funny because I don't like, I, I like natural. Amazing. So, because what we relate to what's natural to yes. us, the natural movement, the natural rea- emotion, the yes. natural reaction to someone saying something to us. We react. That's right. And the way we respond is what comes out on the stage. Yeah. Our chemistry, our gel, how we gel with each other. What is relatable to us? So, I look at, when I'm looking at actors, what is relatable to them? Do they look like a husband and wife? Do they look like a daughter and son, or a daughter and, 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 and a father? Yeah. And, and can they create that bond? Uh, how what what makes your approach different from others? Well, a lot of okay, being a black woman writer, a lot of we get stuck in certain genres, which is another reason why I, I kind of think to Sharon's piece too, because we don't have to. Be. I like to write supernatural thrillers, nice. you know, or I don't I don't, I don't write a lot of um, urban uh, a lot of our urban stuff, although I honor it because that's where I came from. But if you come to one of my plays, you might see an angel flying on the wall, you might see, you know, you could see anything. Somebody in the play is dead and you try to figure it out if it, because I'm, I'm more of a supernatural writer. But I'm a writer who writes with substance. And that, again, why I, uh, when Sharon gave me her piece, I look for substance. I look for, if you, are you going to teach the audience something? Or are they going to leave with something? Even if it's one thing, are you going to change somebody? Do that. Don't just put it up just because it's popular. I'm not about the popular. I'm about the real. What advice would you give people that are walking in your shoes trying to do what you're doing? Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. You may get, and they say it a million times, you may get a million no's, but the one yes is the only yes that you need to and get to where you need to. that may be that one that you're looking for. That may be the one that you're looking for. Can you tell the viewers where to find you? Yes, you can, you can always find or follow me at PSOR333.com. My PSOR stands for Positive Sisters on a Rise. Um, coalition, so PSOR333.com, my, non, my nonprofit organization. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, social media, LinkedIn. You can find me on any of those websites. And I do post a lot on um, social media and um, on, um, and it's just Ron got me into the live. So uh, I'm learning live and I'm loving it. <laughs> How did you meet Madison J? I met Madison J through Sharon when it came over when we did the first premiere in Hollywood of Get Out of Your Own Way. And her spirit lit up the whole thing in her. Like, you could tell she, she, she shifted the atmosphere when she came in. And, and it was a beautiful thing to watch. <laughs> I was in a distance watching how the, ap- the atmosphere shifted with just when she opened her mouth. Like, it was just, it shifted the atmosphere. Oh. It was a beautiful thing to watch. Amazing. Yes. You absolutely. guys, I can feel her energy. It's so beautiful. <laughs> like, I'm sure you can feel it through the, the lens, but... Thank you so much. Thank you. And you guys look forward to the play because we will be covering that as well. Thank you thank so, you, thank so you, much. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we are back with Sharon Monet. Please tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for interviewing me. Again, my name is Sharon Monet, and I am an author. I'm a playwright. I'm also a book publisher, and I am the founder and owner of the company Pen Legacy. Yes. Do you have any advice for people that get in their own way? I sure do, because I am the playwright and the writer of the actual stage play, Get Out of Your Own Way, that is premiering tonight in New York. Um, But the advice that I have for people to get out of their own way is actually trust your gut. Trust your gut and trust the process. Everything that you're going to attempt to do, try to do, dream to do, it's not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy. However, you have to trust the process. You have to understand that failure is going to happen. You have to understand that you are not going to know everything, and it's okay. You have to understand that you may not even be able to afford it. However, if you know that the dream is possible, then there is no reason for you to at least try. Uh, What would you tell a person that has been discouraged from taking that leap? Again, trust the process. Being discouraged only means that you're unsure or you know you have doubt or you're afraid. And those are human emotions. There is nothing wrong with being human. However, move that discouragement and move it into faith. 
definitely move it into faith. Because if you move that faith into you, then that allows you to believe in yourself to continue to move forward. Yes. Uh, what inspired you to Price of Peace? Yes. Actually, um, I'm also a, a coach as well. And a lot of people that I talk to always would tell me, I want to do this, but. I want to do this, but. Right. And it's like, what is the but? Right. And the but is always them. Mm -hmm. I want to do this, but I. Mm -hmm. I want to do this, but I. And it's like, okay, so what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Why are you stopping you? So at the end of the day, I, I took all of the complaining and the issues and the conversations that I would get from people, and I literally just made a fun, creative, real life, social issue stories that actually spoke to everybody and the, the buts and the fears and the failures and the I'm not sure. And I actually turned it to whereas it teaches them how to get out of their own way. Because a lot of times we learn by example. We have to see someone achieve it before we believe we can. Mm -hmm. So that's what this play is about. How did you get started? I got started, actually, actually I've been writing since the age of 12. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So I had some longevity in this. Yes, honey. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I actually started writing at the age of 12. I started out as a poet. And over the years, it just transformed poetry into the staff writer, staff writer into book writer, wow. book writer into um, songwriter, songwriter into theater. So my writing just evolves. What advice would you give someone trying to do exactly what you do? Just write. I get this question all the time. Just get out a book and write. It doesn't have to make sense. The grammar doesn't have to be properly. That's what they have editors for. Every, every writer has a best friend that's the editor. And don't take the editing so personal. But whatever it is that you're trying to do, just do it. There is always someone you can hire that's going to correct it for you. Amazing. How did you meet Madison J? I Actually, I am an editor-in-chief of MadisonJ.com. Um, I started out as a blog writer and got promoted to editor and she I actually met met Edis Madison for the first time last year, but I was writing for her two years prior. Wow. We've actually um, my publicist sent me um, was trying to find me writing opportunities and she ran across Madison and she sent my stuff in. Madison hired me for a blog writer and then here we are. Yeah. Three years later. <laughs> Do you have any other advice for our listeners? Trust the process. Know that things are not always going to go right. But if you believe in yourself, I can't stress that enough. The faith has to come from you. There is no buts. Just move the buts and put I can. I can. I can. Do you use any affirmations? I don't use any affirmations. However, my dad always told me something that I kind of keep with me is, do you dare to be great? Do you dare to be great? There it goes. Where can our viewers find you? SharonMonet.com, and that's spelled C-H-A-R-R-O-N-M-O-N-A-Y-E.com, or my company, PinLegacy.com, and I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's, that's she's all over. I'm so all if over you the place. Find Just her, Google me, baby. I'm Google, Google her, baby. Google me, baby. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank to you. the beautiful Sharon Monet. Thank you. Hey, everybody, it's your girl here, Madison J, and I am in another episode of the Madison J Show. But not just another episode. We are in everyone's favorite segment. You know, when I sit down with one of my soul sisters, do this, Nick. Soul sisters. And we just talk. We talk about life. We talk about wellness. We talk about everything that comes to mind. Yes, that is right, guys. We are in a live segment of Sisters in Spirit, SIS panel. And today, I have none other than the extraordinary, phenomenal, can I say bootylicious? Is that a good one? Can we say bootylicious? No, you little booties booty matter. Booty booties booty 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 matter. Bootylicious. Anybody say the committee, little booties matter. All that good shit. Yeah. The extraordinary Nikki Phillips. How are you doing today, girl? I'm great, sis. I missed you. I missed you more. Listen, guys, when I say this woman here is absolutely remarkable, we started in this game together. We did. We did. We it's did. been a journey. A very it's long been time. a long 
It's over 10 be, years, actually. Over, and it's been a process. So tell the people out there a little bit about yourself, your narrative, and how you got into being, you know, an international supermodel. <laughs> oh, a little bit, but I don't even know where to start. I, I, this is hard for me. How did you grow up? Tell us a little bit about your background. How did you get into modeling, and how did you know that that was your calling? Ooh, um, I, I didn't know it was my calling. It just be, became mm -hmm. something that um, I did. Mm -hmm. I, I, every time it was time for me to stop, mm -hmm. somebody would call me and say, hey, I got this really big opportunity for you. Wow. And it made me feel like that was the call that I was waiting for forever. Mm -hmm. And th this is one of the calls. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it, those are... For me, the universe telling me that you're on the right track, please don't stop. Right. Right. As soon as you feel like you're going to stop, the universe will give you a like. It's like, nah, bro, pick back. it back like, up. Pick it back up. Yeah. So, Nikki, you Vogue, uh, Italiana, MTV, uh, and I think just about any publication in New York that thrives in this business, you've been either affiliated or branded with them. So let's talk a little bit about that. You said this wasn't your calling, but when you look back, you start to, so West African Proverbs says, call Sam Kofu. When you look, you could connect the dots looking back, not forward. Google it, guys. But you could connect the dots, dots looking back, not forward. And in this process, like you said, with the universe, every single time you wanted to give up, every single time, it was something that just drew you in. And me, I resonate with that because with spiritual journalism, it's been a process. You, yo, Nikki knows me from back when I was doing entertainment, gossip, journalism. <laughs> yes. It's Absolutely. been a process. Like yes. the first celebrity interviews to me, to both of us actually transitioning, because that's one thing that I really want to touch on. You see the crystals on my neck, on Nikki's arms. That is one of the biggest essence of this business. Let's talk a little bit about your spirituality mm -hmm. and how, how has that grounded you and what's like your favorite attribute of spirituality? Um, it's hard to answer that because I've always been spiritual before I knew I was spiritual. I like that. So now it's just connecting the dots with the people that are like-minded. Mm -hmm. um, and then they make things make sense. Mm -hmm. The things that didn't make sense before when I meet them, when I see them, it's like, this is why I chose this color, this is why I chose this crystal, this is why I chose this path. And then you meet people that are like your soul tribe. Mm -hmm. So I, it's really hard to explain. Not Spirituality isn't for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but it finds its place with the people that it's supposed to, to be with. Um, I, it's hard to explain. So I think that religion, Right, because that's one thing. It's very touchy. Religion's a very touchy topic, and it's also a choice. Yes. You choose. I believe you know. You choose your religious foundation, and spirituality is the thread that brings the acceptance of all diverse religions, and it's the foundation of love. Does that help? Nikki being camera shy today with the interview because when we were talking, I don't know why she acting like this for y'all. Like she's not talking about. But you know what? People are reserved when it comes to that topic. What's your favorite crystal? Rose quartz. This one, we sisters. Why is rose quartz your favorite? Um, it's it's really big for me for self care mm -hmm. because I was always the person that took care of other people, mm. and that was really hard for me to take care of myself. I felt like the bad guy mm -hmm. putting myself first mm. but the only way that I could become who I am is to put myself first if, if your cup is empty how are you going you can't to fill anything else up you know feed anyone if anything you can't um you you I ended up in the hospital you know um, that's usually what happens to a lot of people because that happened to me too a lot of people that don't that put others before them so was that like a transitional moment for you um, yes, it, it actually was recently, uh, mm -hmm. four months ago, I was admitted into the hospital for 14 days, and um, they diagnosed me with bipolar 1, mm -hmm. um, but I'm using my crystals instead of my medication, so. I love you, and I love that you just said that, 
because one of the things that I'm really big on is healing organically. I love how you said your crystals are the medications because medications are drugs. The crystals are minerals from the earth. And the rose quartz, since that's our favorite, the rose quartz is the crystal for love. And my rose quartz, which is right here, this was the one, first one that found me in this lifetime. And that's usually the first crystal that finds you my at first, that breaking point. My first, my first rose quartz. My first. My first. <laughs> crystals the first one and it's a feminine energy so guys if you want to tap in and it's going to fill it's going to empty you before it fills you up so it's going to it's a process you're going to be emotional you're going to but it, it helps you heal and Big it time. helps you heal your mental Big health time. let's talk a little bit about that um how important is mental health to you oh since i've been diagnosed very mm -hmm. very um I was already on the spiritual path, but you also have to be very careful about the people that you interact with. Mm -hmm. Because if they're mentally ill, or if they're on a lot of negative energy, um, your energy can be tainted. Tainted. That's a good word. Um, so you have to protect, protect yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be very careful about that, and that also can affect your mental illness. And and I don't like the word illness because I don't think there's it's not really not, it's not like the terminology. I would say it was. Bipolar is actually a genius. That's what I was going to say. A lot of creatives, <laughs> like you guys, have already been introduced to a few of my personalities. But a lot of creatives, there's no line between genius and insanity. There, there's all geniuses dabble into insanity because how can you be saying creating a reality that doesn't exist? That's Ooh. why I couldn't take my medication because it blocked me mm. from my creativity. Mm. And that's not natural. It's not natural. Because when I create, I heal. I love you. <laughs> I love so, you. I can't heal if I can't create. Exactly. So. And protection. Because we both have this one too, turbaline. Black turbaline. Any black stone is for protection. But that turbaline, let's talk. What is the turbaline done for you? And we both have it. Let's show them again since we showed them the rose quartz. Ward off, fuck boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello? Let's just say if the person's if the person's intentions are, are not pure, they won't even approach you. They won't come near you. They won't know how to approach you because their shit is off. Right. <laughs> and that could also happen. And it may not even be them. It could be the people there around tainting their energy. So if you and they have them, no idea. They have absolutely no idea. But then also, that's a good reason why uh, you can have a turbulent stone separate. Because you have to set intentions to your stones. So if you get one, and they work better when you touch your skin. That's why we have them on our skin. But if you have a separate one, use it as a prayer magnet to pray for the people you love to help absolutely. release them so that they can find their... Uh, transitional state of spirituality. So don't sleep on the prayers because it works. Hello, somebody. You better say that again. Prayer <laughs> is powerful. I have that. You have that too. That's <laughs> my sister. <laughs> See, but you know what? What I've realized is a lot of people, and you know when I got, because I just started media, like you started with modeling, but uh, everyone's really spiritual, but a lot of people don't talk about it. And that's kind of how I got into spiritual journalism because we would have these conversations with every major but never on camera. But somehow I'm the one pulling it out of everybody. Yeah. The most uncomfortable conversation. And this is the perfect person to do it. <laughs> the perfect person. She's the spiritual gangsta. Hey, that's she problem. taught me some things. Listen, listen. Yeah. We teach each other because that's what a soul tribe is for. Right. Now, Nikki, you a supermodel. We gotta get into the fashion. What are you wearing? Let's talk about the hair because you look fabulous. Thank you. What you got on, girl? What do I have on? I have this dress by Talent Singh. Mm -hmm. He opened the store in Brooklyn. He also has five more chains in oh, wow. other states. So. Shout out to Talent Singh. Shout out to ShoeLimitless.com. She's my shoe sponsor. These are the dorks. And my hair is by Chloe Styles. Oh, did you see how she turns around like a model? Like, yes, honey. In the back of the head. You can do that, too. So, so what advice, wrapping this up, 
Um, we touched on so much. What advice would you give anyone walking into modeling? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. We're talking about crystals, and I was adorned by sacred healing tunes. Sacred healing tunes. Mm. She adorned me with organite, and I forgot the one. She thank <laughs> it for me. So thank you. I, I, you know what? This is gonna this is gonna mold people, and this is gonna change a lot of lives. And I just want to say before I ask you the last question, thank you. One, this topic is not easy for anyone. And for people to come in to my audience and give not just their advice, but to give their energy so purely, it means a lot to me. And this is not an easy topic. You know, I sit down with a lot of, you know a lot of people in the industry come to me for spiritual stuff. That's what I do. But people but doing it publicly, it. Yeah. it's very different. Yeah. And you know, we all have spiritual gifts. And just you taking the time out to do this is, Well, I'm talking about it because it, it saved my life. It right. heals me. Like, I've been out of the hospitals for four months now, and I have not been readmitted. I'm mm -hmm. very grateful. And these are the tools that have helped you heal naturally yes. instead of being put on medications yes. that deteriorate you from your creativity. Yes. I actually, the only way I was able to leave the hospital was to either take the medication um, orally or by an injection. I actually got the injection. It was in my system for three months, and it changed me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm still getting myself back. Mm -hmm. the have help with that. Mm -hmm. so that's why it's really dear to me to share. I love you. I love your spirit, and this is going to help so many people who are transitioning out of that. You are a healer, and you are a powerful being of love, and I just want you to know that. And I am so proud of you. I am so <laughs> proud of you, Nikki. I really, really am. So what advice, anyone with a mental condition, because I don't like the word illness, there's no such thing. So it it? a it mental is. condition who find themselves different, because I also have epilepsy, but that's another topic for another day. Girl! Listen, we want to- Girl, I got asthma. Listen, I'm having an attack right now, because I'm excited. <laughs> you see, I couldn't breathe while I was talking, it's because I was having an attack. I left my pom pom and kind of breathe <laughs> easy. So, so yeah. what advice would you give to someone who is a creative, or a model, and they have an, a condition that makes them feel like they're different and they're having troubles owning that. Embrace that motherfucker. Hey. Excuse my French. No, no, no. It's French. Go Excuse ahead, girl. that motherfucker. Embrace it. That's well. what makes you who you are. Mm. Like, I, I thought I wanted to cry when I was diagnosed, but then you look up bipolar, it means genius. So, what mm. the fuck? Embrace it. You better talk to somebody. Einstein was a genius. Embrace it. Yes. Embrace it. Yes. Your uniqueness is what makes you you. Your spirituality is what makes you you. Your conditions are what make you you. And sharing your story helps people who are going through similar conditions embrace their creative side. So, Nikki, thank you so much. If thank people wanted you. to follow you, how could they keep in contact with you? Find me on uh, Instagram mm -hmm. at Nikki Phillip, and I can get I P H I L I P, and also MPT Studio, where we transform people's lives. MPT Studio means Nikki Phillip Transformation because we transform the girls, we transform the kids, we transform the cancer patients, we mm -hmm. transform the domestic violence cases. We we do it all. And um, She's a healer, told you. She didn't even give me that in the beginning. <laughs> I didn't even know all of that in the beginning. We, but you guys, please. We got a lot going yes. on. <laughs> yes, please keep up with my soul sister. And thank you so much for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Madison J Show. We'll be right Wait. back after this Wait. commercial break. What? She's a, I'm a healer. She's a reader because I never told her that. Oh. Look, we're going to use that as a promo. We're going to use that as a promo. <laughs> so thank you guys so much again for tuning into the Madison J Show, another episode of Sisters in Spirit. And we will be right back after this commercial break. Yes, Okay, so Nikki, what, what is this, um, what is this?
play about. Or with the, okay. Not with the play about, the event. The event. How about the event? Yeah. Um, it's, 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 well, with this event that we're at right now? Yeah. Well, the play, I know you've been at a lot of events. The play is called Get Out of, Get Out of Your Own Way. But, um, I don't know what it's about because I haven't watched it yet. Oh. But, um, it's basically about getting out of your own yeah. way. Yeah, <laughs> it's a nice name, though. It's a good so name. It's, it's pretty cool. It's a packed house. Packed house, um, and you did a lot of interviews. It's tonight. a private uh, screening, and um, we're just we're just really happy. We we interviewed the writer, the director. Um, we got some goodies. Look at our new magazines. We got Freddie Koch in here. But she'll be interviewing me, and then we will interview each other. But um, stay tuned, we'll, we'll probably give you like a snippet or behind the scenes of, of what we're doing and what they're doing here. So stay tuned. All right. <laughs> I was like blinded because he, like, he just like caught me off guard. He's like, so. <laughs> <laughs>